Hi, this is Mike Walter. You know, for years I've written in trade publications and given seminars at DJ Expos all about how to begin, grow, and maintain your DJ company. If you haven't visited my website, I invite you to do so now. You'll find me at www.djmikewalter.com. While you're there, you can read and subscribe to my blog, order my book, Running Your Multi-Op, and check out my complete staff training program that is available on DVD with an accompanying CD-ROM. I also offer one-on-one business consultations and staff training sessions. You'll find all that and more at www.djmikewalter.com. and The Wedding Wizard, and you're listening to the DJ Idea Sharing Podcast Network. Welcome, everyone. You are listening to the DJ Idea Sharing Podcast Network, and I am your host, Mike Fernino. Today in the archive, we speak with a gentleman who has the complete zest for life, a man with so much energy, he can't possibly keep it in to himself, a man who puts smiles on every face of every person that he meets. Scott Favor is widely known as the Game Master, mostly because of his gregarious and bubbly personality, which transforms any room into a giant celebration of life. Scott is an expert in corporate events, weddings, and bar and bat mitzvahs. He has become a fixture at many of the DJ conventions and infamous for his 6 a.m. Breakfast with the Game Master get-togethers. Scott currently hosts his breakfast as part of the Las Vegas DJ show and conference held every September at the LVH Hotel. Today on the archive, my constituent Rob Peters sits down with Scott from our 2006 series recorded live at the South Point Casino as part of Mobile Beat. It's time to play with the Game Master, and here's the interview with Rob and Scott on the archive. So I am so thrilled to have you up here. It's nice to be had. It's it's Scott <laughs> Favor, the party favors. Woohoo! Now, two offices, California and Arizona. I'm a nut. You are. You are. Tell us a little bit about how you get in the business. Hey, I, I've never heard this story. So you I'm, have I'm, not heard this story. I've never heard the Scott Favor story. Okay, I have an interesting story that I'll wrap up nicely for you. It started, I was a closet DJ. You DJed in a closet. Yeah, like so many other bedroom DJs. Okay. I was, you know, had my two turntables, and I was doing vinyl in my house and making tapes for people. Mm. And somebody said, you should DJ. And then I got a, a break at a roller rink. And so I interviewed one night, and from one night, one week later, I was doing five nights at the roller rink. Wow. And from the five nights at the roller rink, I then jumped to... Three nights at the rink and two nights at a club. Then turned two nights at a club to four nights at a club and three days at the rink. And you get the idea what's going on here? I can can see the days all merge together. They they just blend it. And so you're working five, six, seven nights a week. You're filling in the days. And then I went mobile. And then from the mobile, I went to this game guy. And then here I am. Game master. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. And just for emphasis, game with an M. That's what I said. Yes, game I know. Ma. Yes, game but master. I have this gay master, gay master. reputation. Oh. <laughs> so let it be clear on this interview and forevermore. <laughs> married, two wonderful kids, straight as an arrow, love to party. <laughs> <laughs> Mar- how long have you been married? 21 years. See, we ask you how long you've been married and not how old you are. That's okay. But I'm that's married okay. young. <laughs> so you've developed into... Two companies, basically, you're running the party favors in two different locations. Difficulties. Joys. The joy of having California, strong market. Anybody who's anybody can make money in California. There's just thousands of DJs. They complain about the competition, but the truth is there's so much work there that even mediocre DJs can make a really good living in California. I happen to be a little bit better at that, so I, I, I do okay. Arizona, a completely different market. And I'll tell you, the traveling 
doing the seminars across the country has been a great education because it's helped me to recognize that what plays in Peoria does not necessarily play in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a great lesson. And so the challenge is travel between the two and keeping DJs in California who are working for the company happy and trying to build a business at the same time from scratch. In Arizona. In now, Arizona. It, so you have more than just you? In, in California. Okay. In California, we have two or three guys that hold down the fort and keep it going. And then I personally perform there as well. And then in Arizona, it's just me. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. I think it also gives me perspective when we talk about the marketing thing that – all these guys that say, well, I don't do any advertising, and it's all by word of mouth, and it's all referral. Well, yes, but how many gigs have you done? Events. Sorry, shouldn't use that G word. <laughs> how many events have you done, and how many years have you been in business that have allowed you to build up this rapport with the vendors and people who refer you on a regular basis? That's my California stronghold. But in Arizona, they don't know you. So now it's marketing, and it's, it's networking re all, over all over again. Yes. Scott, the one question I've always had, and I, I have to know, and I'm sure our listeners are going to want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Where do you get these, where do you come up with these ideas? <laughs> what do you drink in the morning? <laughs> I, I have to know. You know, it's, it's a great question, and one you didn't prep me for, which is nice. Of course. I told you I was holding one for you. Well, that's good. Um, the magic, believe it or not... And this is scary. He's crouching to the microphone yeah. here. I As feel I like I'm about to get a secret. Well, there are no DJ <laughs> secrets, but the truth is that I plan, 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 and then I leave the plan behind. And on the day of the event, in the moment, in the heat and the passion of that event, the light flips on. Wow. I would never recommend that. To a newbie. I would never recommend that to somebody who needs to have everything planned out. Here are my props. This is what I'm going to do. Here's my list of things that I'm going to play and my dialogue that I'm going to use. And Mark Farrell, God love him. Mm -hmm. That's very much him. And that's what he teaches. But Bill Herman, he's an actor. He's an entertainer, and he does it from the moment. And if you have that passion for what you do, it can be very exciting because here's the prop, here's the plan, but on the day of the event, they need something else. Somebody has said something, somebody has done something, and it triggers that moment, and that allows you to be creative, and that is inspiration. It's divine. It's delightful. It's the lovely. <laughs> it's delicious, and I love it. You have a, a passion, obviously. It, when we've talked about this, obviously, off record. Um, when are we going to be able to get you to come and show, uh, show off for us at DJ Idea Share? Oh, well, Another for, question I didn't prep you for, well, but that's, that's okay. okay. But for the record, um, I'm currently on hiatus for doing seminars and for doing sharing in a traveling mode. I'm still available for anyone who wants to catch me online at prodj.com. I'm still the moderator of the interactive forum. I still provide on, online content only for Mobile Beat magazine, and I'll still be doing whatever I can in the back. But coming on stage and traveling, I'm hoping that it will allow others to step up. You got a couple of hundred thousand frequent flyer miles for all the traveling you've done. <laughs> You're going to take, take the family away and spend a little time with them? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it is truly about spending some quality time with mom and the two wonderful kids and getting back to building my business. Good, good show. Um, in the pace that you're in, finding balance since we're on the topic. It's been a big issue on our boards. A lot of people have been asking the question, how do you find balance in between being a DJ business owner, being a speaker and traveling, spending time with the wife and family, how do you find that balance? I mean, I, you're a planner to a degree. I mean, I, I've, I've sat next to you and watched you. <laughs> but how do you find that balance? Well, for me... Up until now, anyway. Well, I still think, even though I'm going on hiatus, that there's been a good balance. Mm -hmm. um, but the magic, the secret, is if there were secrets... I have a wonderful wife. 
She sticks by me no matter what. And I make sure that I plan in time for family. And it's not always on the holiday. It's not always on the actual day of the de- event, but it's always in the time that fits within the business. And it's always special time. And it's for them. When I'm family time, I'm family time. Mm-hmm. I'm not on the phone talking to my customers. I'm not answering messages. It's family time. And when it's business, it's business. Great. And you know I start the day early. Of and course. that's never going to yeah. change. <laughs> I want to share with you this new idea. It's what I call the circus effect. The circus effect is that now, Scott, we know you dress. <laughs> so I'm wondering where you got the ringmaster outfit. Game master, vision marketer, and now ringmaster. Well, Tell us about this. Well, the circus effect is the answer for DJs that say, I got on the microphone and I said, hey, everybody, we're going to do the electric slide and I'm going to show you how. They play the music. They get out there on the dance floor with the microphone. And that's what you hear. Silence. They're sitting there. They're not moving. And so you think, oof. Okay. (laughs) What do I do now? Oh, okay, everybody. Come on. Now we're going to do the cha-cha slide. And the same effect. Dead air. The circus effect is working the audience, massaging them before you get on the microphone, before you make the moment. But instead, picking out key individuals or couples so that when you get on the microphone and say, now we're going to do the electric slide, here's the music, and join me, those four or five couples already know that they're going to join you on the dance floor. And they become the fire, the catalyst, the enthusiasm, the excitement with you and for you. I like it. Yeah. It's it's, it's powerful. That's nice. Thank you. And... Not on any of my DVDs and, <laughs> and not shared yet anywhere else, but right here. We have at, an exclusive at DJ Idea Sharing. I got to share this with you. Oh, uh, here we go. See, the other one was Circus Effect, right? So now <laughs> exactly. we have IE, instant entertainment, instant excitement, instant energy, instant enthusiasm, instant you're there. When the doors open and the guests come in, Traditionally, the banquet room wants to wow their audience. It's how the tables have been set, how the lighting has been dimmed, and it's dramatic, it's beautiful, it's elegant, the flowers, the centerpieces, all of this. Fine, so be it. But at some events, you can take it to the next level. And on the dance floor, with more than just music, when the guests arrive, there is something happening and that is instant wow this is going to be a party and it is instantly notified to the audience as they enter that this is not going to be like any other event that they've ever been to because it doesn't happen that way very nice what i'm referring to is having something going on immediately and i have some suggestions feel free thank you that's me feel free <laughs> Corporate event, corporate setting. The doors to the room open and the guests come in and there's the high five team. You had talked about this yesterday. I, I, I had a feeling you were going down that yes. road. Or what I call the Bravo Club. Same, different name, same concept. When the audience comes in, they're receiving a cheering, warm welcome as if they are MVPs from the team that just won the Super Bowl. Very and nice. That's the idea. For a mitzvah, baseball theme, I have kids on the dance floor in the positions as if they are playing ball, and the bar mitzvah boy is the pitcher. No ball, no mitts, no bat. Music in the background take me out to the ball game, and the MC dictates what the kids are going to do. They don't know until the MC tells them. So it's almost like a combination instant entertainment, but a game effect as well because the MC is controlling what's happening. That's right. I like that. When the audience comes in, Bobby's on the mound. He has the pitch. It's a screwball. It's coming fast. It's coming across the plate. The pitcher swings. Get the idea? And so as you announce it, they have to then act this out. 
Very nice. Very, very entertaining. Very Now, I'm, I want to switch gears on that same concept. Mm-hmm. And I think I know where you're going to go with this, but I'm going to let you share. Wedding. Oh. In a wedding environment. I love weddings. For those who have my first few DVDs, a lot of shtick, a mm-hmm. lot of games, a lot of silly stuff. Fine. It's okay. Play with it. But recently, in my market, Weddings have become more and more elegant. And so when you're talking about a game or an activity, it has to have an air of elegance. Otherwise, it's cheesy and the bride's not interested. Now, maybe your market's different or it may change around and we'll be back to doing shtick again. Mm -hmm. But as it stands right now, we're in the elegant mode. So when we play a game as the wedding guests arrive, it has to match the tone that the bride and groom are looking for. I may want to... Play something simple that's a tabletop game where the guests are going to each table write down the number one reason why Bob and Sally are going to stay married forever and ever. And that becomes just a simple tabletop game. And we share those ideas. Number one reason why Bob and Sally are going to stay married forever and ever, either by me as the MC to the audience, or if I feel that the audience is professional enough then we'll have individuals at the table stand up and as a representative of their table announce why they think Bob and Sally. And we do that while Bob and Sally are in the room. Or we may play the newlywed game. Now, here's the fun part. I like to play the dating game in a cocktail hour because the bride and groom aren't in the room yet. They're out taking pictures. And then we switch it to the newlywed game when the bride and groom arrive. Very nice. And a shameless plug, if you need newlywed game or dating game questions, send me an email and I'll be happy to provide them for free. And that's scott at thepartyfavors.com. E-R-S. You've been so open to share and you share at every convention you come to. And I know the DJ community at large has a debt of gratitude to you. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the people who haven't been able to come. Obviously, what are they thinking? But more importantly, if you had to give three pieces of advice To somebody new in this business who's never met you before, what would it be? Great question. Great question. And far more encompassing than I thought you were going to ask. Thank you. My first is don't be afraid to take challenges. Don't be afraid to take on that larger event. Don't be afraid to think for a moment that that client is too big for you to tackle. Because those challenges will actually be the catalyst that will allow you to grow and expand as long as you recognize that you may need some help along the way. I have booked a lot of large corporate events, 5,000 people. At the time, I was just one DJ. (laughs) And so what do I do? I scramble and I round up some people who can help me and I put them on the team, throw company T-shirts on them and (laughs) out we go. You know, after little training, and we do a great job. For many people, that can be scary. But the result is, because I took the challenge, my business grew. Don't be afraid to take that challenge. Beautiful. Um, In the creative mode, same idea. When you're at a wedding, don't be afraid to step out. Get out from behind that microphone. Go out on the dance floor and do something magical for their guests. Nice. You get that third one? Yeah, that third one's going to be really, really controversial. Okay. Whatever you think you're worth, double it. Makes sense. Scary. It is a scary concept. Whatever you think you're worth, double it. And I don't care what they're charging in your neighborhood. I don't care if you're the most expensive on the block. I don't care if you're the least expensive on the block. Double it. Good advice. Good advice. Scott? Yes. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. being on the show. And we're live from Studio 1835 at the South Point Hotel at the Mobile Bee Conference, right here on the DJ Idea Sharing Podcast. <laughs>